Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Ontario Soil Network and the Mosaic Company. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Soil School. In this series, we always talk about soil health. We talk to farmers about the importance of organic matter. We talk to researchers about the, the need to feed soil microbes and, and create resilient soil. In this episode, we're joined by Omafra Soil Management Specialist, Anne Verhallen. I asked Anne, what makes healthy soil? And she said, Bernard, it depends. There's a lot of things that make up healthy soil, and it really starts with how you manage that soil. Here's Anne Verhallen. So what makes a healthy soil? That is the eternal question, right? And it's a tough one because it really depends. It depends on how you define soil health and depends on the soil type that you're dealing with. So let's take the soil health part and take it apart a little bit first. So we'll often use the, hear the words soil health and soil quality used interchangeably. And in my mind, they're not exactly the same. Soil health is well, let's start with soil quality. Soil quality, to me, is the inherent properties of that soil. So is it a sand, is it a silt, is it a clay? Is it in southwestern Ontario or is it in northern Ontario? So location matters, soil type matters, previous history and management matters, but a lot of the soil quality part really is the inherent quality. So it's what's the soil profile like, what's the internal drainage, whereas soil health is how is it managed and is it reaching its full potential? Um, an example I often use is if you think in terms of human health. So using me as an example, my quality would be my genetic component, the fact that I have a father who had a heart attack at age 50, there's cancer in my family, all those great wonderful things to look forward to, and the fact that I'm living in southwestern Ontario with some of the poorest air quality in the country. So that's my quality. My health is how well I manage that and how healthy I am because of that. So my exercise, my diet, how I manage my life. So it's the same kind of thing when we talk about soil health versus soil quality. So the next part, if we're thinking about soil health, we usually talk about it in kind of three pillars or three groupings. One being chemical, so that's our fertility and pH. I think we've got a pretty good handle on that. Then there's biological. That remains a bit of a black hole. There's lots of study being done, but it's, micro, it's from microbes to earthworms and ground beetles. So there's a lot of unknowns there. And then the third part is the physical. So this is the structure of the soil. How those aggregates, how those soil particles are held together in aggregates and how those aggregates are held together in terms of making good tilth and, and uh, a good soil structure to grow crops in. So the thing that binds all this together though, the thing that is shared by all three of those pillars is organic matter or carbon, depending on which way you want to talk about it. And organic matter is the binder. It's the piece that helps to hold fertility. It's the piece that is part of the biology and also drives biology. And then with the structure, organic matter, organic carbon plays a huge role in building a stable structure and a stable structure is really what we're looking for in a healthy soil. We're looking for a porous, open soil that allows plant roots to thrive, for the seed to germinate, establish, and then those roots to be able to scavenge through the whole soil profile. That's what we're looking for in a well-structured, healthy soil. So, 2021, it's been a terrible wet year. But different soils have taken it differently and a lot of that comes back to, of course, soil type and, and drainage, but a lot of it does come back to soil health. So let's take a look at these two samples I've got here. This first one here is a field that's got a diverse rotation that also includes perennial forages. And I can already hear you guys saying, oh, I can't afford to grow forages. Okay, fair enough, but I just wanna show you the difference. And this other field has a long-term rotation of corn mostly corn, a little bit of beans, and virtually no wheat. And what I see structurally here, and admittedly, they're both very wet samples because they've never dried out since July. What we see is tremendous structure. We've got these fine little 
our aggregates with this, this field that's got the perennial forages in it. It's got a darker color. It actually has almost a point more organic matter. This is something around 4.3, whereas this other field, and they are separated by less than 100 feet. So they are the same soil type. They've just been managed differently over the long term. This other field is somewhere in low threes. So about a point difference in organic matter. There's a slight color change even, but you can see the difference in the surface of the soil. This surface is still quite open. It's, you can see the aggregation with it. Whereas this field, the one that's been primarily corn has been sealed. And if it was a little bit drier, you would see that we've got a, a very thick crust on it. They're both very productive soils, but one is more resilient than the other. This one with the higher organic matter, the better soil structure is going to be more resilient year in, year out. This field, yeah, it is very productive. But take a look at a couple of things. One, we've got the ceiling at the surface. We do have these fine aggregates, which if I threw into water, you're gonna find that they're not water stable. So they're gonna blow apart. That's part of the reason we're getting the ceiling at the surface. And then when we look further down, into the, the just below the tillage pan, you can see that we have a much more blocky type of structure with just very fine cracks. That's what we're depending on getting the moisture, the excess moisture we've got right now from there down into the tile to deal with this field. So we've got a problem in getting water through this soil, whereas the wider rotation with the higher organic matter, the better structure, one is gonna hold more water in years where we're dry, and it's also gonna let more water through. So more resilient, less resilient. Still both very productive soils. These both can easily make over 200 bushel corn. So again, coming back to what makes a healthy soil. Some of it is the background. It's the soil itself and what you're trying to do with it. But the other thing is how the management is. What's the plan over the long term? So taking a look at this piece, this is from a field that was harvested very wet. And you can see that we have a problem with this one. We have very low porosity. We don't have a lot of space for water or air. However, that's a result of this year and how it was managed this year. The thing with this particular field, it's well managed most of the time. So I know that it can rebound and come back from this. This is in a long-term rotation that includes wheat. And fair enough, you can't get a forage in your rotation. But if you're growing corn and beans, you can get something like wheat in the rotation. That's going to give you that fine root system. It's going to build structure. We're going to have better porosity. Because remember, we're trying to build organic matter. We're trying to feed the microbes, build that structure. There is, it's kind of like human health, right? Remember I talked about health versus your inherent quality? You can't just pop a pill to get healthy. It takes time, it takes effort. Whether you're gonna run or you're gonna watch your diet, whatever it is, it's no different with soils. There is no magic pill. There is no magic potion that's gonna magically make this and fix it. The grower who owns this field, his plan is to go to wheat and the wheat will be in the rotation in the long term and he'll reduce his tillage and he'll manage it. And this will continue to be a very productive field. It takes time and it takes management, but building soil structure is important. <laughs>